fun, okay? Yeah, there's some broken stuff floating around, but it, making it exciting. We're getting some new champs here. Yes. Samira bottom lane with the rel. That's even more exciting than Plotting. that. And also the Goldie that Team Liquid was starting to extend energy, making sure to neutralize it as much as possible with the farm evening up across the mid lane. And then, you know, mind Dopla too much being on. A members of Team Liquid already on it. Daisy, the first to enter the pit. He got it! It goes in, but Contract making sure to get the secure. Multiple knocks up onto Team Liquid. But the pull through from the Magnet Storm and the slicing mails from follow up from Summit means there's no more contracts, but no more Summit either. FBI right there in the crosshairs of Yon, who wants to make him a pawn in his own game. Dokla obliterated. An ultimate. Currently, he's been flanked on, though. Eyes from multiple members of Energy, the unstoppable onslaught. Collapse upon Summit. The rest of Energy were ready to collapse as well. Three members to the top side. Distortion down for Harry. Energy continue to commit to this, and Harry with no way to escape, just falls knock-up after knock-up, passive pops. In the grave he goes, but Summit here for the collapse. Teleport response from Energy, but Palafox goes down before assistance is had. It does not matter, though. The damage is good from FBI from the back line. Yon falling on into it, but FBI and Ignar now oh, have a sandwich between multiple members of Team Liquid. They reverse the damage. They pull another kill. Yep, Douglas trying to finish some his ultimate, gets his dust blade proc as well, and gets to wipe them. I think the call from energy had to be more clear in, hey, we just got our pick on the LeBlanc scenarios, but in, in games like this where you're so far behind anyway, definitely is could be a big benefit trying to find those picks. Yeah, energy, they don't lose any players, but they lost all of their ultimates. So one ultimate from Team Lee. Oh, okay, now they lost players too. Yep, Harry over the wall. Absolutely annihilates FBI and now Team Liquid. They put a gate at every single entrance to this river and energy. Don't even try to pick the lock. Team Liquid pop off for their second. Gonna still be Team Liquid looking for these. Oh, Ignar has to pop the ultimate and contracts knocked up out of it. Harry gets gets partially slaughtered before they can even really make use of his entrance. Team Liquid just burning down this Baron. They'll be wearing purple in no time. All right, that's gonna give you the pushing power. No ring at level 16 with double buffs and static shiv uh, is a poke champion, especially with Knight Harvester because your static shiv proc, you proc it off the minions, bounce it to a player, you proc your Knight Harvester passive as well. So you get the extra damage there. Oh, oh, Palafox knows that he's outnumbered. So has to pop the ultimate just to be able to escape. Okay, so he escapes with his life. Nice little move, almost able to get core JJ. A little fancy with it. They defend on mid and top. They did eventually lose the outer tower on mid, but that one was going down no matter what here with the power of the Baron. And they're just gonna be able to reset energy. 10,000 gold deficit now that they're staring down, but they're still just trying to squeak out any little bits of gold value for their carries for themselves. Continue to try and play defensively. They know Team Liquid are lacking true siege potential, true range, so they're trying to just hover around their towers. Forward because of that lack of range, because of energy. Trying to go for picks like this one. Poor JJ falling into some trouble, but has the shielding and Yawn rooted on the entry. FBI had to flash out of it because he's almost done. In fact, though, it's both bot laners eliminated at this point. Harry trying to escape over the wall, but cannot do so. Palafox putting in the work while the teleport comes in from Team Liquid side. Pioshik coming out of stasis. Palafox knocked on down by Summit. Dokla, big beefy boy. Summit keep going after him, but it's Ignar that's got Pioshik and Core JJ holding him by the horns. And Team Liquid say four is enough. We win the fight. Yeah, exactly. And now, guess what? Nobody to defend the towers so they can just go in with yeah. their baron buff what they've been waiting the, for the real rewards here mm. all of the towers they've got plenty of kills 
Don't need more of those. Time to take the towers after you wipe them off. Two more towers. 5,000 damage from Palo Fox. Wasn't enough for energy to be able to take the fight. Can they take this one? Pioshik goes into the back line with his ultimate. An FBI, so much damage lost. Dokla already taken out. Team Liquid won't let anyone slip away in these fights. Yon, once he comes out of Golden Stasis, he's here to join Team Liquid on their push down mid lane. Summit, my God, coming in through with the clutch in these team fights. Contrix, <laughs> I don't think that your brush is enough to hold them off. Yeah, they don't even care about minions. They're just going to go right on in and try and look for an end on this one. They do have a teleport for Harry, so... Ah, yeah, like Team Liquid. going to stick, stay there and finish it off now. Yeah, you've got plenty of time before the whole team of energy comes up. Team Liquid, fourth dub of the split. They are streaking hot, hot, hot in the summertime. River, of course, the Jarvan, the classic champion for him, but we get oh. the Rel support. It's much better in support than Jungle, by the way. I uh, was trying to convince. <laughs> Yep, Santorin's finally making that rotation upward. Has Jensen, has Diamond, Enchanted Crystal Arrow, along with the Maokai Ultimate. Many, many, many a stun, but the Kindred Ultimate, as a result, keeps River in it. Slamming into the back, River flashes away, and first blood is drawn by Jensen. Two traded for one, but Licorice looking for a wall to flash over, finds it. Gory. Meanwhile, Gory did get the counter kill onto Jungle, got double buffs, and is kind of this big hope here for Golden Guardians. The kill threat with the... Teleported down to get here as well. And now with the eight wave ushered through, teleport response from Golden Guardians just to make sure they can finish this off. The kick away from Rich to try and even the numbers just a tad does manage to fall at the hands of Golden Guardians. Stick say with the kill credit. They say, okay, you're going to overload for Rift. That doesn't look like it, though, with Huhi coming up to match as well. So I really like that call from Golden Guardians. With the full commitment from Dignitas up to the top side of the map, they teleport yeah. for Gory flank. The Golden Guardians have started up the dragon. Dignitas encroaching upon the river and teleport used by Golden Guardians to try and get the opposite angle. Huhi going in with the ultimate activated, but goes down hand of Jensen Dignitas wanting to follow up with some more dragon slain by River all the while Golden oh. Guardians shifted away with the Emperor's Divide Jensen giving his life for it and the Lamb's Respite escaped by River to be out of the zone to take the aren't really a big advantage and you're looking for some more side lane plays Oh, Stun Santorin's in some trouble. Taken bye bye. out before anything really even happens between the two teams. Rich is going for it. Double knock up onto multiple members of Golden Guardians and who he wants to take Tomo down with him. It's a two for one trade thus far. Licorice picking up the enemy ADC and is hungry for more. Rich, what a slice from the queue from Stixay, but manages to stay alive. Those AP Varus pops. Even with the attack speed early items here. Dig being very focused on their team fight. Gory finding a positioning on the opposite side of the pit, but who he's the first one to go and make the play. Gory slicing through the back, but Santorin trying to lock back down. Dig Diamond is the first one to patrol for Dignitas and Golden Guardians keeping focus on this dragon. It's getting poked from both sides though, the range that Tomo has and the ability to do so. Jensen trying to get a little bit of a poke at it as well, but the re-engage is good from Licorice. Now, all of the obliteration onto Santorin. River and Huhi looking for Jensen. Uh-oh, Can he Jensen, get, he get there. Huhi goes for the grab, and it's River with the kill, Craig. Dragon for themselves, so Golden Guardian is trying to do a lot, but Dignitas, being able to defend and in the end pick up the easy Drake. And the hope from Golden Guardians was to divide those resources from Dignitas, a team that wants to play together, but instead when drawing them apart, but not able to draw the health bars down enough onto the objectives, they don't pick anything up just yet. Dignitas, on the other hand, getting their first Drake, but it's just one. And now the focus is back over onto the top side. Golden Guardians whittling down the Baron once again, teleport coming on in as well to ensure the team in full is here. 
for any approach that Dennis Digital may come downtown. Early. Santorin throws out the ultimate once again. Poppy kicks Licorice away and sticks a very close to death before the Lamb's Respite ends up popping. Gory goes into the back line, tries to get the kill onto Rich, but has to go golden. It's a shutdown onto Stixay, but the entirety of the bot lane for Dignitas has been killed. Double kill for River and Golden Guardians want to lock their sights on the remaining members of Dignitas. Golden Guardians with the bear. River, really good ultimate here. Save Stixay, gives them some time to force out the dig bat line. You see Rich and Diamond got so low, but then Jensen, he shifts in. He tries to go for the big kills, the sweep on that Kindred Ultimate. The last second stopwatch there from Licorice keeps him alive. Rich, for instance, wanting to knock on the jungler, but getting a solo laner instead. GG are just looking cleaner. Oh, but here we go. Teleport coming in for Dignitas and an immediate stun onto Licorice, who pops the watch. Turret doing some damage. Oh, well, there's the Emperor divide to knock two under the turret, and who he goes golden himself alongside Jensen Gori from the flank wants to go for the kill, finds it onto Azir, and Gori now very dangerous for a moment until the rest of the team can collapse upon Santorin and Golden Guardians get their second ace. Yep, and that might do it for us. It's only 32 minutes into the game, but Golden Guardians pushing the inhibitor, going for the Nexus turrets. Everybody from Dig is dead, and Golden Guardians will pull it out. I'm sorry, Fudge, but it looks like you're wrong on your prediction for the day. Starting week two strong, it is Golden Guardians decimating Dignitas to really pull things together with a little bit of flair in the final <laughs> moments. Oh, the double ace and a win. Nice timing on the pop at the end. You know, there's not any true tank on this yeah. squad. It's two bruisers, two carries, and thrash. So, yeah, you're going to get a little bit of value early, potentially out of stack. Especially in combination with the anathemas, because you don't have to be so far ahead of the curve of the game then, right? It just allows you to play the style where you dive in on the enemy carries. Nice flashing from Spika. Yeah, Spika going in there for the Q flash on Blabber, who drops the fear tethers. Venom Berserker engaging from below, and there comes the pop blossom. And it's first blood over to C9 and Imanez. Blabber still in the 1v1 against Spika. Here with the Drake pit, his prince is chased away by Berserker. Oh. Blabber gets the kill in the 1v1 of Berserker, picks up another. FlyQuest are dropping to the ground, and Sven's <laughs> burying them. It's 4 nothing C9. They just won the game at seven minutes. They took line and sinker. They got him there. Sven flashing in for that final kill. And Blabber, it's just a 1v1 fight in the dragon pit there. Gets a solo kill member, so in splashes Spika, but Blabber kites back, he drops the fear. Oh, up on top side. Meanwhile, Fudge wanted to dive, slicing Maelstrom ain't gonna do it. Possibly fine. I'm expecting them to try to look for some more. Whenever Nocturne has his ulti, I always expect to see something come of it. There it is, Paranoia in the mid lane. It makes it last longer, and it gives you vision in that area. So there's a lot of little vision tricks you can look for. Fudge in trouble again, top side though. Spika ready to focus down that cannon. Slicing Maelstrom gets sliced instead. The second Drake of the game, 12 minutes in. This will be a nice early step towards a soul stack for C9, but they will lose that top laner here yet again. Zero, two, and zero for Fudge. But Isaac, the shiv is complete. Yep, yep. I mean, he even had it before that death, but it did not save him. <laughs> so it, it's one of those things, I will say, Static Shiv is really good in the extended laning phase. If you can lock someone in lane and you're winning, it becomes miserable uh, to be laning against this, but Ooh, uh, Sven in trouble here. Yeah, nice hook there. Coming out from Vulcan, but Blabber swoops in from the side and they're ready to turn the fight around. Meanwhile, they found the re-engage back onto Prince. He thought he oh. had something, and Imanaz just swoops in to finish off the remainder of FlyQuest. He'll pick up the kill on Vulcan. And he just kind of walks into his death, and now they're going to lose the mid lane as well. Uh, but that static ship, while it is really strong in the 1v1, it's not a great team fight item. It was this team that I think a lot of people were expecting to be able to challenge them, but I haven't really been able to give much of a challenge so far. Oof, Vulcan exploded. Your tanky support actually can't even face check anything. Like, Thresh is one of the tankier champions on their team. Uh, Azir definitely can't do it. Aphelios definitely can't do it. So if Thresh wants to try to steal it, but... Oh, early spell shield. That was not the move. Yeah, that um, was a little silly, but a little bit it antsy, is... But didn't matter. 
It is a Cloud Soul as well, so yeah. I feel like if that was Infernal Soul, maybe a Hex Soul or something, Cloud9 would have felt more compelled to fight it. But like you're saying, I mean, you're gonna get gold in mid lane for the tier two. You're gonna get gold in top lane for the tier one. Maybe from uh, the Nico, he's on his second item now. It's already complete, and they have the stopwatch. And Kennen is wrapping around behind them, so uh, this oh. could go really bad. Ben already engages. They're looking for the burst, and they found Vikla. <laughs> Look at the C9 minion. just immediately. Look at the cannon is here. Pop off the one three <laughs> double kill back over to Fudge. Everybody but uh. Impact drops dead. A triple kill for the Lightning Rat and C. C9 just mopped him up, man. I think we're gonna get the ace right here. Impact wants him in S, but he's not gonna get him. Ace! Back over to C9. What was that kid in doing there? MS on the long wraparound. He's transformed again because when you are transformed, you can't see when the ulti is casting. This is the biggest problem with it. It looks so silly. And I think he even has less move speed because he's in cannon. Like he looks so slow. for the, the ace. We checked the box for the Baron after, mm -hmm. and now it's time to check the box for pushing in and winning because C9's got everything they need to take this one all the way to the Nexus, I would have to think. There goes the ulti from Blabber to dive into the back. Wants to go after Prince first now, popping that Zonia's to keep himself alive so there's no re-engage immediately. MS did not find a target. There was He's gonna get caught up to by MS. Obviously, he would die. So it is those summoners down for just the ultis from Cloud9. They take the tier two, they grab the dragon, they're pushing up mid as well. And it's tough to start off 0-3 in week one, and then your yep. first opponent in week two is the number one team. Oh, there's a lantern, but there's no oh. light at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> Prince is gone, man. 35 seconds with no Ophelios means that base is about to look a whole yeah. lot worse. Shiv just immediately clears over. the minion wave away. Fudge has the ulti ready to go, has that Zonia so that he can engage with impunity. Oh. Oof. <laughs> All right, here we go. Live, we're going to pop the ulti. Just going to use it to actually get them to push back. Now he's going to go in on Prince. Dives after Prince. Blabber getting hooked back in by Vulcan. They want to try to engage here on the jungler. Fly quest grabbing a kill there, punishing C9 for a little bit of a disorganized. Maybe make that miracle happen. It's so tough for FlyQuest, though. Even ignoring how far ahead C9 is, you have to fight in these small chokes, these corridors. And when you do that against Kennen and Nico, you're up against two massive AoE ultimates. Blabber with the engage on everybody. Berserker into the back, but he's going to be shuffled. He pops his own Zonias. Pop Blossom on four. And m &S just wins the fight for C9 right there. It's ace for nothing. GG. Nicely done from Cloud9. They get the perfect team fight there. Everyone slowed down by the Stripe Vicker. That allows the rest of the squad to catch up. MS gets a four man ulti. And Cloud9 gonna clean this one up 28 minutes in. The mini wave is coming, so let's tank it up with the clone for now. And they're gonna move to 4 0 and push FlyQuest to a winless 0 and 4. Tough stuff for FlyQuest, but C9 gets another one in the win column. 19 to 4. They will go AP, I feel, because they yeah. have no physical damage. I guess you can go triple shift yeah, for your AP. True. There you go. Magic damage, just triple shift props <laughs> all over the place. When you've got both of those with yeah. the full push, it's very easy to take this first Drake. It's another ocean six minutes into the game. That's going to feel great for all your lanes. Absolutely, especially when you're going against, you know, poke like this, uh, this early ocean. Uh, and having that advantage on that bot side. And Kenby now about face check. Kenby's got a problem, and the problem's named Insanity. He tries to flash away, but Chime with a flash follow handshake. All that matters is where the money goes, and He's it goes. moving down, and you can see Chime is coming up as well. Insanity has returned for base. I just don't know that they can actually get in the pit fast enough. It looks like it's just gone. Okay, the Herald's already been secured by IMT. They fire off. The hostile takeover. Boogie's here in the middle of everybody. TSM with a super mega death rocket across the map. Find the first and Hauncer with the entire time this game. That control has given them these advantages. There it is. Second Drake of the game over to TSM. A lot faster than any can. And you can even see, you know, when you compare that, that ulti trade that we saw in mid lane where you're talking about Tibbers getting knocked back uh, to that first time as we may have a dive here. Yeah, they fire off Nature's Grasp. They try to flash out, but Balulu is not going anywhere. They get the kill over to Insanity again. Boogie wants to get oh. out, but Solo knocks him down. It's a nice punish from Immortals, and it's delivered by the top laner. He wants to get another one. This is two very low health bars. Nice sidestep from Chime. And Chime, because of all that damage that did land, so, you know, not really expecting that. And Solo's gonna get back a tower, so wow. A great roam here from Solo. It is actually first brick as well. Scion just got paid, like, out of nowhere. He's gonna be one of the richest guys in the game. Well, Hauncer's tanking up. 
here leading the charge for TSM, who want to stop Immortals from grabbing the second Herald of the game. Little knock-up coming out from Treats there, spending that ultimate as the nice hostile stopper. takeover flew out, but honestly didn't get a whole lot of results. Boogie at about half HP, gonna have a smite fight here. Herald stolen away by TSM, but now Insanity about to drop. He's got the bailout, but it's not gonna bail him out today. Shutdown back over to Balulu as Treats flashes over the wall for the chase, but he is alone. Everybody else can't get over the wall in time because of the choppers. So now we'll see Haunter disengaging with the rest of the team. The Hex Gates are taking Maokai on a special <laughs> run, quest Boogie. In the jungle. Boogie has retreated towards enemy lines. Balulu's out there. <laughs> Fire burns tree. Goodbye, Maokai. Oh, can you get the, can you get the wall? Okay, there we go. He almost had smite. The immolation, I have to be able to hurt these frontliners. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting, right? Because there's two schools of thought. There's like, uh, but he's going to be tough. Uh, but he is going CDR boots. He's going Leandry. So he's going to have, you know, that CDR mythic passive as well, which allows you to have really good uptime with the bear. And you still can definitely threaten those squishies with Leandry's build. It's just obviously not kind of built for like a full on one shot. You may be able to make it so they don't even want to take the fight. Well, they're going to start the Drake oh, up already. Tactical's in an awkward spot. They're yeah, tactical. That's not where he needs to be. Flashing back over the wall, staying alive. They fire off the Kin V ult, but the Glacial Prison hits nobody. Hanser joining back up with the rest of TSM as Balulu is behind him. Finds the stun, but only onto the Cassante. He's ready to go all out, but he's nearly bursted before he can even get there. Hanser's about to drop, and Balulu shuts him down. Nature's grasp over the wall, they get Balulu back. TSM trying to fight here. Insanity's low. Chime and Turtle are separated from the rest of the team. Insanity back close to the turret, looking to keep himself alive still. As Solo leads the charge. Turtle with the game force away. Kenby with a flash forward. The bailout comes through, but it will not save him. Decimating smash on the two, as Kenby barely keeps himself up, and Solo's looking to Tank everybody with a double kill back over to Insanity now. Another decimating smash. Solo is out of mana. Kenby's still looking to take the blue buff. He runs back into a face full of buckshot. Immortals just got cleaned up. And TSM just got paid. What a messy fight. But at the end of the day, it's... It, okay, TSM murder crushed this fight, but it's so disorganized. Look at everyone who's completely... And he was so low so early because Balulu focused down Hauntzer. And then Insanity was right next to him. This time around, though. Big ultis. Remember, the hostile takeover in the nature's grasp. Massive tools to swing this. The way of Turtle TSM. has no flash. Turtle's got to be careful because Treats is over the wall. He has real flash ready to go if Immortals want to try to turn this. Nature's grasp goes off first. TSM looking for their fight. Decimating Smash here on the front. Treats goes over the wall, but Treats is alone. Haunts are being focused by the rest of Immortals, but Treats is going to die first. Hostile Takeover guarantees it, as Kinby and Solo are controlled by the powerful ulties of TSM. Immortals continuing to disengage back over the wall, as Balulu and Tactical got to regroup with the front line. They're going to go Baron. away a freebie. Yeah, I mean, Flash is over the wall, but your whole team is zoned out by the Maokai ult, as well as by the Renata ult. And if you don't have that, like, where, where is your damage coming from, right? Because you just have Lethality, Varus, and you have an Annie without ultimate. Who's who's going to do the damage here, guys? Like, no, there's no one to really threaten the Jinx because they couldn't actually get back to him. Uh, and in those, like, full turn fights, you don't have time for Varus to soften them up like he did in that Dragon fight. So, you know, I understand the thought process, but it seemed like a very difficult vision to kind of execute on. And now, potentially, Hauntzer's going all out, but he's maybe just going to die. Chunked himself pretty deep, but they knocked down the turret. Nature's Balloon. grasp and hostile takeover. Balulu goes into the back. But he's all alone. It's too little. It's too late. It's two, four, gone for Immortals as TSM just killed three for nothing. They got the Baron. They got the minions. And they got themselves moving straight towards an IMT Nexus. Yeah, they're getting it all. Chime. Oh, he's going to go down here, unfortunately. Took one shot too many. But we'll see if this stops them from ending. They are getting a little bit low. And now I think they're getting nervous about... Because they knew they could knock the turret down and force the fight. Jinx starts that fight excited. Boogie goes in. He goes for the twisted advance and tactical's already down. Solo's tanking rockets with no follow-up from the rest of his team. Balulu is low and Insanity's assassinated him. Kenby wants to get away. And there's just no hope. Treats dies next. A double kill back over the turtle. TSM crushed the fight. TSM's bringing Haunter back into the top lane. And TSM are ready to finish this game. TSM destroying Immortals here today. 10k up. Not even 30 minutes in. They are going to be marching on the Nexus. A dominant win for TSM. They're going to move to 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Looking really good so far in the summer split. Yep, they're going to tie Immortals here in the standings. Taking down them Nexus turrets, padding the stats. They don't get the soul, but who needs it? Nexus instead just past 30 minutes into the game. 18-7, 12,000 gold ahead. Trying to see if they might be able to get one or two more kills. 
Tactical nearly dies on spawn, and TSM take the dub. Yep, TSM. That's usually the carry on That's, this that's what I was going to say, is that Ash is more the supportive role, right? right? Like, you're not the main character usually when you are that playing Ash. Not Trinity. Well, I mean, the problem is you don't you don't have mobility, right? right. So it's, it's uh, very okay. difficult okay. to actually to go through. Closer is going to walk over the ward here, so our Mayo already sees him there. Most of the baby chickens stolen away by Closer. Spectrum off of Armeo. Jungler's level five. Quid rotating over now, but Armeo wins this 1v1. Get that mid with Cyan ult. Yeah, level there we go. Revenge going in. Oh, he Quid just got tries to go for the outplay here. The charm lands. Oh, Decimating smash onto two. It's first blood back over to JoJo. But there comes the shuffle. Quid buying a little bit more time. Someday goes all out. Revenge goes down. Armeo escapes the last turret shot. EG's got himself a two to one lead. Oh. Armeo's about to drop. Someday needs oh, one lived. more Q, but he ain't gonna find it just yet. A little bit of footwork might close the gap to give him the last in Tofo strike. G, right, so you know one of the easier places to find those flanks sometimes is around you know dragon fights and whatnot. Right. So do you think that should raise the importance of trying to stack and have this objective where you can maybe pull them to you? Yeah, I think that definitely Ooh. does. Ooh. Armeo, nicely done there, using the heartbreaker to get back away, and now Quinn is under pressure. They need a little bit more damage to finish up, and Armeo's got it. Now he can reset, and Closer's gonna die too. Over the wall goes Armeo, but Ailis Ignite already has the kill. Side hundred thieves to find in the first 10 minutes of this game that first drake is about all they got yeah they get the dragon you know bot lane obviously is farming well they have a cs advantage on top side too so there are some things but um immediately play more aggressive to make it happen but he has those aggressive tendencies they're going for these invades constantly and they're looking to die oh closer yeah, just gets caught you gotta know there if the support's going you can't i don't even think you can flash over the absolute fattest part and you've got to kind of flash over the skinnier parts of that triangle yeah Jojo getting ulted back it's into closer. Dead. Under Thieves want to make the play, but EG's got more men there, and they got him there sooner. Closer's the target oh, now no. as Jojo dashes back away. Armeo with a stab in the back takes Can't down one. Time for them. Next game for Under Thieves, double of Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> right back to it. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. Hey guys, someday oh, is up 20. Oh uh, man. Quid. I'm getting some. Right. Okay, he lives. Okay, right. he lives, cool, guys. Cool, it's cool. Fun. Yeah, Jojo did not have a flash. Moving up towards that top lane, trying to knock down this turret plate where they still have the chance. Only 30 seconds left for those plates to stand. While well, Jojo's just gonna race them to first turret here in the bottom side. He'll take that one down by himself. Solo gold on the Ari. Uh, well, at least they don't speak it very well. It's really hard to be on the same page and gonna have a lot of issues, especially when you start losing games. And it's. It's. it's oh, they've already killed double. If they start the fight off, blowing up the enemy AD carry, they follow it up with the mid laner. Both kills go to Armeo. The Viego, 6 0 and 3, 100% kill participation. Absolutely running the rift against 100 Thieves. Yeah, Armeo and JoJo are having a hell of a game here. It has been all about mid jungle. You said 100% KP for Armeo has been really putting a lot of pressure on. And EG are running away with this one really fast. But you know, back to your point, Fudge, like you're saying, it, it is difficult when you are missing your mid laner at the start of the year. You know, it's hard to really have like a fair judgment of the strength of the team. But um, clearly they are struggling. I also was thinking about like, from Revenge, Revenge's perspective, he's like been on Immortals his whole life and now he finally gets to play Scion and get carried. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, how nice, how nice must that be? Like I have that, that feeling all the time. Upgrades. Oh boy. Well, EG's going in again and 100 Thieves are trying to get the hell out of town. Busio lives. Someday's trying to stand and fight. How long is he going to stay here? Goes all out, brings Revenge over the wall with him. Decimating Smash isn't going to find anything, but the rest of 100 Thieves now has to be careful. Armeo is godlike, and Dunn was dead again. EG, pick up another one. They're forcing everybody else away. Unforgiven gets a second back on the ah. Quid over and over like, again. You already FF too many times in scrims, so like you got to keep playing, <laughs> but you don't really want to play, so you just keep inting and keep dying <laughs> so the game can go as fast as possible. <laughs> this, is, this is what it feels like right now. Uh, Something, okay? He got the red. <laughs> I mean, I assume that EG is just going to look to play mid bot side right now. Yep. Um, they do have the Herald. Double of 5k. And as, just as you guys said, it's Ayla and JoJo on the flank, ready to go in. Ayla with a flash engage. Busio's the target. He's already down, and Armeo's legendary. Revenge leads the way towards the enemy carry. Goodbye, double if the heartbreaker, the playmaker. And JoJo's the one taking in there. You don't want to just completely blind face check it, but then if you go too slow, the Baron's already dead by the time you get there. It's like. Yeah, from this spot, every every decision looks every bad. Every decision is terrible. Yeah, guys. every decision looks terrible. Uh, and let's be honest, I mean the game was really won through mid and jungle, and I think that is where you know EG are deserving of a little yeah. bit of play from that position. I, mean, I think it's like when you play when you play that aggressively, and taking out these resources from the Azir to the point where he's falling behind in health, he's losing the push, oh, losing in always. A huge 
a zero a, ultimate. A massive shuffle onto Scion. 100 Thieves are going in, but the problem is it's already on the tank, and now can they oh. find it? Nice shutdown back over onto Ayla. Maybe it's the fight after all. Armeo gets one back, possesses Quid. Defensive Heartbreaker back into the fight. Unforgiven joins up, but 100 Thieves, they engage on the enemy tank. And for the first thing about the Azir turret, and I, and I agree with you that the Azir turret was actually a big factor in that fight. Um, but mainly that Zaya was just not there for like basically the entire time. You're too cautious, you give your opponents too many opportunities, exactly. right? To make plays and to find their own windows. Ooh, well, here we go. They don't want to give them no opportunities now. Jojo leads the engage and Quinn is already in the dirt. Devil might have Trinity and Shiv, but they'll bury him next to his mid laner. Double kill to Jojo, can make it a triple. Armeo going legendary on that one as Evil Geniuses continues the charge. It's the blabber strategy. Just throw five dudes at him and send it down mid. Some days all out, but Unforgiven puts him down too. Closer's trying to deal with anything at all, maybe cut the wave, but instead it's Ayla and Revenge ready to cut that health bar down to nothing. 100 Thieves are aced for free. It's EG in the base, 27 minutes in, 19 to three. They'll make sure Quid's introduction to LCS is not a pleasant one, and they'll find themselves their third win of summer 2023. Right when I was going to end the call, they decided to pat their oh! chest instead, and Quid shuffles oh. four on the back of the mountain. Now the game's done. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, first